Imagine a camera that takes pictures of the real world and produces stylized images clearly conveying shape. Shape that can be used in technical and artistic illustrations, animations, and visualizations. While the non-photorealistic rendering of scenes from 3D models is well understood, creating such images for real-world scenes is still a challenging problem. Imagine that such a camera, no larger than existing cameras, can be made simply by adding more flashes. In this video presentation, we show how it can be done. The basic principle is simple. We observe that when a flash goes off while a camera is shooting a photograph, thin slivers of cast shadows are created at depth discontinuities. Also, if the flash is to the right, the shadow is to the left. If the flash is on top, the shadow is at the bottom, and so on. Clearly, if we have enough flashes positioned strategically, we can use the shadows to find the depth discontinuities. To do this, we perform a pixel-wise division of each shadow image with the max composite image of the four flash images. This gives us the ratio image. As can be seen, this eliminates texture edges and accentuates the shadows. From the imaging geometry of the camera, the shadow boundaries can be found by traversing the epipolar lines in each image originating from the light epipoles. By positioning the flashes in the plane perpendicular to the optical axis containing the camera center of projection, the epipolar lines become parallel lines. They can then be aligned with the pixel grid to make the traversal more efficient. Now the depth discontinuity detection problem is reduced to a simpler problem of detecting negative step edges in the ratio image scan lines and columns. Combining the depth edges found in each ratio image gives us the complete depth etch map for the scene. The depth edges detected with our method are different from conventional edges in that we are focused on shape boundaries. At each depth edge, we know which side is the foreground and which side is the background. This allows us to create rendering styles that exploit the additional information about the real world, something not possible with existing NPR methods. The depth edge map allows the tunable abstraction of features not associated with shape, such as texture details. By preserving only the gradients at the depth edges and attenuating gradients from other edges, we can selectively suppress textures in a scene without compromising shape edges. Intensity attenuation maps derived from depth edges can be used to accentuate depth discontinuities in a scene. We can also assign edge colors with colors from the foreground object. If we choose a small baseline between the flashes and the camera, the shadows may become too thin and difficult to detect. Although this problem may become insignificant with higher sensor resolutions, it would be nice to be able to work with digital cameras available today. We can make shadows easier to detect by placing flashes at a number of different baselines. However, when the baseline is too large, shadows may become detached from depth discontinuities. This problem can be solved by combining images from both small and large baselines. Specularities can pose a problem when they shift among images. We deal with this problem by replacing the max composite image with an intrinsic image. Depth edges can be used to detect changes in a scene by identifying edges that are not present in a reference map. To demonstrate the use of multi-flash imaging in medical applications, we modified a laparoscope so that we can turn on and off the two lights next to the camera. This converts it into a multi-flash camera and allows us to create stylized renderings of organic tissues. We can use depth edges to produce cartoon-like videos directly from video sequences. This camera has flashes that can be triggered rapidly and are synchronized with the video frame capture process. Motion between successive frames makes it difficult to compute the ratio image. A high-speed camera can reduce the amount of motion between frames, but the lack of simultaneity cannot be assumed. We simplify the problem by assuming that motion between successive frames in image space is less than the width of the moving object. Here, we show a more complex example. We have presented a simple extension to existing digital cameras. We hope that it will be useful for professional artists and illustrators as well as casual users.